Hi all, uh, welcome back. Um, so I'm, if you remember the video, part one video, which I've just re I'll renamed by the time you've seen this, um, I'm going to go a bit further into what you can do with the AWOS scrap machine basically. Um, as you probably remember, if I grab this and bring this over, this was uh, the second machine I built and it had a nice two and a half gigahertz um, uh, Intel, no it's an AMD CPU, I do apologize. Um, it's got a great little um, couple of gig of RAM, still a spare slot there for more RAM, but uh, quite two gigabytes plenty for this. Uh, I added in a 16-bit Sound Blaster live card. Uh, very important you get the EMU, um, the EMU chip, <laughs> EMU chip sounds good, it's EMU 1010K or something like that, I'll put it on in the description. Um, and then an Intel, I use an Intel Pro network card and I've got in here a, a, an old GTX 7800 series graphics card, which does all the graphics. Now, the one thing that was wrong with this, the only thing really was that the um, the hard drive I used was a very slow old IDE, and it really could do with a bit of a speed up. So I thought, you know, as thing the, these things evolve, so um, I thought I'd, I'd do a bit of an upgrade. And I'm also there's a separate video part, a clip as part of this. I'm going to show you um, how to install Icarus and where to get it from. Um, I'll show up about that because I'm going to obviously uh, say more about that later on. Right. So uh, hopefully some of this information is going to help you with whatever you build. Um, that's the idea of this part too. Um, so I'm going to be covering things that possibly I won't even do. But let, let's, let's go to town on this. Right, the first thing was the hard drive. Now in there is a 40 gigabyte IDE drive. Now um, the one thing about AROS at the moment is it uses it, it cannot use the latest version of the SATA drive uh, drives, which is a, obviously a pain in the backside. Um, but I'm hoping we can get some SATA drives written. It's quite a big, complex subject, so um, it's something that needs to be doing, especially now because everything's gone SATA. However, you can get round this if you've got an IDE connector on there, an ATA connector um, on your motherboard. That's great, and you can use it. However, if you haven't, and I, I'll be honest, I haven't tried this, and I may yet this end up being a part three. Um, but I bought this little card here, and it goes into a PCIe um, the, the PCIe one slots, and it's got a SATA on it. We don't need the SATA. But what it has got on there is it's got a uh, ATA IDE port on it. Now I'm assuming, I'm hoping that I'll be able to stick this in a modern motherboard. Now when I have got coming for this part three video is I've got a new motherboard coming for my beast over there um, which has got PCI slots so I can put my sound card in my network card which are both PCI and then I'm going to put this in the PCIe slot um, and then we'll be able to use IDE. I hope at some point we'll be able to get SATA drivers sorted out and that's why I ask for new developers because it'd be really handy to get that. Now once you've got your ATE sorted out then what, what I do is I've then gone out and I've used this in my, you probably recognise these, I used this in my 1200s uh, and, well, and a 600 I had which I recently sold. Um, and you can see it's just a, a, an adapter that plugs into um, the ATA slot and on the back there's a little floppy disk port. So you need the floppy disk power connector. And then what you do is you take one of these cards which I picked up for I think it was £20. Um, there, that's 16 gigabyte, which doesn't sound very much, but my entire AROS system, I think at the moment, is consuming about 7 gigabytes. Now, um, I think 16, you can get 32, I've seen 32 gigabyte versions of these, which are coming from like 30 pounds. Now, this is a 50, 50 megabytes a second, which I think should be quick enough, but you can get some that are like two or three times faster, which I'm going to get one of them as well to, to experiment with. But you can still pick these up, and this is brand spanking new. So this is what's going to go in there with this adapter, okay? Um, and then uh, I will give you at uh, some point, uh, well, in, in this video, actually, in a separate clip, I'm going to show you how much faster it works. The thing, the reason for doing this was I noticed when I was running, although everything's really quick, most because AWOS is based on the mini operating system, which means everything's really efficient. So it's not like Windows, you have to go off and load up millions of drivers, and it's tons of hard disk access. This is the one problem with the uh, first machine I showed you. If you, I mean, I'll be fair. If you have Windows on it with one of these really old drives, they really thrash the hard disk. Hard disk can't really cope with it, and, and that's why they seem really slow. You swap that out and put a, uh, a solid state device in, um, 
then your performance goes through the roof. Um, with Avros, I mean, it's so efficient. I mean, it just stuff loads instantly. But what I was noticing was when it was loading up OWB, which is quite a big beast of a program for an Amiga operating system, um, it was accessing the hard drive. So it was sitting there waiting while it was the driver was trying to, to cache data, etc. So um, that uh, and read font data, that kind of thing. So um, I'm going to put one of these in here, and then we'll see the difference. Um, you probably remember actually when I was loading stuff up, certain things were taking a while and I was sitting there waiting for it. Now that should be much faster. Two and a half gigahertz processor, to be fair, is actually really good. Um, so that's that. Um, the other thing I've got, which I'm going to put in here as an experiment, and this is really aimed at the um, um, part three video of this, but I bought this. Now this is a GTX 460. Now AROS, out of the box as it stands, will support... 400 series graphics cards, which for Avros are overkill, um, absolute overkill. But this is this is actually um, I used to have one of these many years ago, a slightly different version, but I thought it was really nice. And this one came up for like 20, I got this for 27 pounds, um, and and this is a monster of a 3D card. So this is really aimed at the um, the part three build, where part three build is basically taking a modern motherboard with a modern niche or modern, I mean that's an i7 6700K um, uh, and that's going to be going to fly and I'm going to run um, I'm going to run the standard AROS which is at the moment only using one core but then I'm going to test it with the multi-core experimental AROS so you can see what it can do on a proper piece of hardware um, so I think this is going to be quite a nice little test so this will go into that machine um, on pricing, let me just give you an idea what all this costs So. Um, if you buy, if you've got a uh, motherboard with only say to drives on it, and you want to get one of these, now again, this is going to be in part three video, so I su suggest you subscribe because it might not work. I've not even tried it yet. I'm just assuming it will, um, but that, we'll see what happens with that. But that was about seven pound fifty, so it's peanuts. Um, this this here, this adapter costs three pound fifty. Okay, um, these are actually for what they are actually are getting a little bit expensive. I mean, um, you can pick, I, I, you can get four gig ones for about a ten, and second hand five ten pounds. But I bought this brand new. Um, I, I think it was, I think it was either nineteen pounds ninety nine or it was twenty two nine. It was something around that figure. Um, but as I said, my entire hard disk with everything I need on it including my Amiga operating system, Mac operating system and everything on there is using 7 gigabytes so you know unless you're going to throw in loads of data on it obviously then uh, that's stimulating entirely but um, so I think 16 gig for, for a lot of people would be fine um, so it's not an expensive thing to, to build now also um, I'm probably going to do a section in here which I'm, I'm going to give you if you want to build your own Amos machine with new hardware I've already looked, and um, if if you talk about, I mean, let's just go by the motherboard, the CPU, and the RAM. Okay, um, there will be more on this later on, but you could pick up a motherboard for about I've seen them for thirty pounds, uh, which is su suitable mother thirty forty pounds. Then you can get a really good AMD dual core for about forty pounds, which is like four gigahertz. And bear in mind, you only need one core at the moment, and if we go, you know, when we go multi-core. Which we are going to in case of getting it going. Um, when everything Icarus goes multi-core, then um, you'll see real performance because you'll get double the performance with the dual core. But if you can buy a quad core, you can buy an eight-core AMD bulldozer, I think it is, for about eighty pounds. But then you get into so that's let's say with RAM, you can pick build. I was looking at it's about one hundred and thirty pounds for a motherboard, a fast CPU, and say a couple of gig of RAM. If you step up a notch and you want to go up to um, the new Ryzen chips now the Ryzen i3s are quad cores they're about 90 pounds a suitable motherboard is about 60 pounds RAM's a little bit more expensive you're probably talking about 75 pounds but again you're you you, you the, the basic one with an old AMD chip you can build you know 130 pounds go up to Ryzen you're probably talking about up to 200 250 now of course then you've got to add on for example 20 pounds for one of these and I suggest you know you do it this way it's 20 pounds for one of these one of these cars, assuming it all works, obviously, um, about seven pound fifty, and so on. Now I'm going to going to make this information available. As I, I would suggest you, you subscribe to this and click the alarm button because then you can see how I'm doing all this. But anyway, so that's that's the basics there. Um, and uh, so now I'll shut up, and then um, you know, we'll see the rest of the video. Okay, thanks very much. 
Hi there, back again. Um, okay, so I've um, I've put in the compact flash drive into the system as I was telling you about earlier, um, and I was going to be putting this GTX 460 in it, but I, I, when I, I double checked on the specs, this needs a 500 watt power supply, and the power supply in here is uh, only 400 watts, and plus the fact that it's a bit of a bit of an old power supply so I didn't really want to stress it basically so I might damage the card or damage the machine or whatever and anyway the 7800 uh, GTS I got in here is actually more than good enough for this particular machine so um, I, I want to show you how much faster everything is so um, if I do a quick reboot and uh, we'll get I'm just gonna do a quick reboot now obviously remember this takes a little bit of time to go through the BIOS and all that mucking about but um, once it gets started, now you'll notice here, if you look in here, you'll see there's a red glow. That's uh, when the disk is accessing. So let's get this in. It'll come up with a grub in a second. Okay. Right, here's the grub now. So here we go. All right, so that loads up the, um, the AROS kernel, and it's not Linux, it's an AROS kernel people do sometimes say that you can see it flashing away now you watch how quick it comes up there you go Insta oh, well, I was instantly but it's really damn fast if it wasn't for that BIOS and we could skip to the BIOS quicker it would be really fast now let's have a look at something now if hopefully you watch part one so you hopefully remember maybe you can go back and have a look if you're that interested and see the difference in speed let's up let's open up um uh, OWB which is the one thing that takes quite a bit of time because it caches everything so if you watch it now it'll load up now just a few seconds and it's loaded and also when I was loading web pages Amiga World let's load up Amiga World because it's caching everything off to the hard disk you can see it's caching and then it's finished now it's loaded it's it's all there and it's ready to go so this little CPU is pretty good in here um, for most websites this CPU is, is is very very good now this is quite a heavy duty one this is um, BBC website and you can see it's doing an awful lot of cache into the hard drive, but that that's done. Uh, oh, it's still a bit of downloading. But now, if I scroll down, you'll see it starts. Ah, oh, okay. So you want to see these images? So it starts caching them all to the drive, and so that's where this this compact flash really makes a difference. And that and that's actually really nice and usable. So you can look at these great new sites. Now, let's there's there's obviously the the YouTube one. Now, the YouTube one does work. It really needs a faster processor. I mean, this is one of those things that. Uh, because we're now talking getting into video streaming video etc so there's a whole lot of things go coming in at play here there's the network the network access etc but if, i think for this a faster processor would be good but i'm going to show you but before i do that i'm going to switch owb to spoof a different browser so i'm going to set it up to tell it it's going to tell the websites that it is now it is it is now internet explorer 8 and it seems to help things uh, now let's rub that out. Let's actually put YouTube in here, shall we? YouTube dot com. Okay, so there's YouTube loaded. Now let's uh, let's grab one of these uh, videos. Let's say that one. You see, so it's actually working. It's actually working in the window. The the problem is, it, I, I think the CPU is really to to do everything. It's asking to to stream it, um, you know, cache it and play it in the right position, etc. I, I think it's maybe just a little bit too much for this. And this is where the the faster processors are really going to kick in. If you look at the next, but it works. You know, it actually works quite nice. So it's good. It, it, it does work, but um, it, you know the faster processor will really make a difference here. Anyway, let, let's close that down. Let's give it a that. Okay, next thing. Now, if you remember when I ran the, um, uh, I, I ran my my um, emulator, Amiga. Now you're going to have to probably go back at part one and relook how long that took to load. But now I'm going to show you this, and this is almost instantaneous. So this is going to load Amiga OS. In a full screen, where it's a 1280 uh, 720 instead of a, a 1920 by 1024, but it's going to load out really quick. So we click on that. Oh, 
bang as soon as that comes up and we're in and that's pretty much it now we've now loaded that that's now uh um amiga workbench if i double click on i mean it's just it's so fast it's, it, it literally as soon as you click the link it displays give an example his tv paint bang i mean this is just crazy fast um what do we got here uh let what else have we got i'm always loading that one up uh, let's load this one up bang there we go it's absolutely brilliant i i did a test i, I didn't actually do that i did this test on the um I haven't got this, this is not, it's actually doing a bounding box here. Um, that's because the way it's set up. Let me, I'm going to do the same test. If you remember the test I did on the other one. And I'm just, oh, I've done that. I'm just going to do the same test. I'm going to do this film. You can see the difference in speed, actually. Let's undo that. Let's actually do the same test, shall we? There we go, right. Now, this is at 1920 by... 1080. Oh no, no, it's inside tell lights. 1280 by 720. There we go. Bang. How about that? It's nice, isn't it? Right. Let's. Uh, I don't. Really, I mean, I've done. I've done most of the demos. This really just show you difference in speed of the way the system works. Um, by Shapeshifter. Let's give this a go. Okay. You ready? Here we go. It really makes it does make a difference. I must admit. All right, let's uh, close it down. I don't, I don't want to show you because I've already done a demo of that. So let's get rid of that. But hopefully you can see that everything, anything that's got that needs disk access. I mean, it's just so fast. Um, I mean, look how quick. I mean, I can't even. You know, bang! What it's there. I mean, it's just coming off the drive ridiculously fast. I mean, even this. If you watch Q2, if you remember how long it took to to start up. Bang, it's, it's there. Um, obviously, with, when you actually start the game, you're going to get into. There we go, loading it up. There's obviously processing, which is going to take just a. You can see the, the drives flashing away there. There we go, wallop. And 60 frames a second again. I mean, it, you know, it's just fantastic. So there you go. That's to me made a nice difference. So I definitely recommend. Um, Compact flash, uh, solid state drives are going to be a bit of a problem at the moment because um, uh, the whole reason for being a problem is because the SATA. But as I said before, with the um, the next video, I'm going to be doing some experiments with this little card to see if it work how well it works because um, I, I do think we can build machines or you'll be able to build your own machines, a complete machine for uh, a four so four gigahertz machine for probably 200 pounds okay and that's if you build it now i am considering i did the omega project before and i built a ross machines for people who don't want to go for all this hassle i'm considering doing it again um and if i do obviously it's gonna be more expensive if you buy it for me but it'll be ready to go out the box um so i'll come back with that but i, I won't be surprised if i can build a really good machine for about 299 um you know like a basic box um but we'll, we'll see that we'll, we'll come to that soon but um uh, maybe later on with a Ryzen system for 399 that kind of thing so um, that's what I'm hoping to do but the complete system not not just a board not a board you know um, this is will be a complete system there you go so um, I'll let you know how I got on with this thing as well that's it that's um, that's that for now um, speak again soon hi okay this is actually um, the train the tutorial side of things um, I decided to make part two more of a tutorial, so I'm going to show you how you can set this up. I've already, I think I've kind of covered the hardware, how you can set that up, but um, this is about the software side. Now, with AROS, um, there's a number of ways you can play with it. Um, you can go to the AROS, main AROS site, which is this one, which is AROS.org, and you can go to the downloads, if you click on downloads, and there's there's what we call nightly builds. If I click on the nightly builds, go to nightly builds. You can download these files here. Okay, different different variations of uh, different systems and uh, some hosted, etc. PPC version. There's a well, there's obviously an old version there. Um, 
their 68k versions to sell. Now these are the what, the nightly builds are basically every night they get compiled from the latest source code that's on the system from the latest commits. This is a great place if you're a developer and you want to go and have a look. But the reality is most people actually what they want is a proper distribution like you will with Linux or anything else. Now there's a number of options. Um, there's um, there's Eros which is uh, by Pascal Papara and it's, it's quite good. It's um, a nice a nice system. Uh, there is also which I should have actually opened up that link. Let me just go and grab this for you. There's another one here called Aspire OS. Um, uh, here we go to Aspire OS. Hope you're looking at the uh, the links at the top. This was really designed for um, the um, Acer Aspire ones. Um, after I had the drivers written, um, and uh, it works really well. It's nice. It's a very efficient um, and lightweight operating system. But my favourite um, is Icarus Desktop, which is by Pascal Para. Pascal Papara, <laughs> Paolo Bessa, sorry. Um, no, he, he's been doing this for a long time, and, he, and he's, he's been keeping this up to date, and, and it's, even now it's up to date. You can see the latest version, 2.2.1, uh, June the 26th. So it's constantly evolving and being worked on, um, and it's, it's probably the most complete. It's a bit like getting yourself a full-blown um, Linux distribution. I... I seriously recommend you download this one and the, and then tweak to your heart's content um, so it's uh, icarusdesktop.org hopefully you can see that I will I will include the links if you, if you don't see this but um, so basically this is his site and you can see he's got lots of updates now I, I suggest you go and have a good look at it um, there's an awful lot of work being done on this uh, and it is really nice I mean it's about two gigabyte now I mean there's tons of software on there um, and is it enough for most people to, to get you going? Here's some nice tools uh, as far as uh, 68k support. I, I kind of go against the grain a little bit because I know how I like to do it um, and I like mine full screen as you've probably seen whereas this system is set up so that it can um, can run in what's called coherence mode so an Amiga application will open up in a window as if it's actually running within AROS. Um, that's good if you've got a really fast machine um, but if you've got a slightly slower machine it's it, I dare to say clunky, but it's it's not as nice. Um, but that's maybe just me being fussy. Um, the other thing about it is, of course, it's got the you don't need Cloento's um, Amiga Forever uh, because there is the 68k um, kickstarts and the 68k AROS OS. I mean, it, it's all on AROS. AROS has got 68k sewn up. So, having said that. Um, Yes, it, it works and it's very compatible with Kickstart, especially for games. It's really good. Um, but I, again, I still, I mean, I've got Mega Forever and I find it's it's really nice and fast and efficient. So I still at the moment stick with that. But that's that's your choice. Anyway, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to go to download. And I'm actually going to run through the process here, but I'm going to do it in a virtual machine. Um, so it's, it's, it's the same way as doing it in hardware. Okay, so first thing you need to do is you need to go to decide which one you want to download. Now there's the Icarus Desktop Live, which you download a two gig zip file, and then you have to burn that to a DVD. Now you, I, this is not a tutorial on how to burn DVDs. Okay, you need to know how to do this. You can also um, put it onto well the light version. You can put onto um, a USB stick. So. Uh, the full version is 2 gig, but the this one here, the Icarus Desktop Lite, is about 400 meg, and this is what I've actually downloaded here. So it's it's basically the base, the very basics, as it says here. So it's got the everything to the Amiga, the compatibility layer, and it's got a browser, etc., etc. But none of the extra, the, the main extras. Obviously, it's a lot smaller, um, but it's brilliant for doing things like you know creating a. a, a um, a USB stick to, to install or run from. Okay, so um, I've already downloaded this, but just click on that, download it, and then and we'll get started. Now, um, I'm going to jump into what may be running or may not be running. Yes, it's running. Look at that. I'm going to blow this full screen. 
Now, basically what this is, is a virtual machine. Now, this has had the, the CD-ROM installed into the virtual machine and it's ready to install. And you can see here, I've got HD0 NDOS and that's basically a virtual, virtual disk. But this is exactly what you would do in the hardware. Now, bearing in mind with the hardware, you need to have a CD-ROM drive or have created a USB boot stick. So, um, without that, let's jump in and do this. So now what we're gonna do is double click on install AROS. Now this happens very quick on this because it's a very fast machine. Uh, it's a solid state, so it's, it's not gonna be as quick as this when you're doing it on real hardware. Um, but so if I click on proceed, the first thing it's gonna say, use you wanna you wanna switch this and say, well, we got a DOS, let's, well, that's a good question. Um, do we wanna wipe disk? Well, disk is wiped, so let's say use only free space. Now, if if you had partitions already set up on the the disk, I would suggest do wipe disk, and then proceed, and then reset it again, and come back into this again, and then use only only use free space. But because this is a completely empty partition uh, drive, so I'm going to leave it as default. You can play with this if you want. You can specify the size, etc. But I'm just going to leave it as one big drive, and I'm going to press proceed. And now it's basically done. You can see it's been created. Now all I need to do is just do that again. You can see it's a virtual machine. Let's uh, bring that. Right, and you can see it boots really quick, but that's because it's in VM. So let's do this again. So install AROS, proceed. Okay, and you can see now it's selected use existing AROS, peti AROS petitions. Now, if you do it default, it will work. Um, sometimes people play around, change settings, and it doesn't work. So, I mean, that's completely up to you. But now, um, I don't want to install the development software. Now, bear in mind, remember this is the light version. There is some extra software, but it's not the full the, everything. Okay, so let's click proceed. Yes, I wanted to format that petition. I didn't set work, so I'm, not, I'm just going to leave it as it is. Now this is the, the grub bootloader. When the machine boots, and it will say, I want it in graphics mode, etc. And it's and it's basically telling it the device it's gonna run from. So press proceed, and we're ready to, to, now what it's done now is it's formatted the drive. If you look over on the left, if you look over here, you can see it's now called AROS. And it's installing everything from the virtual CD-ROM. Now with a real machine, it will not happen this fast. It probably take about, 15 minutes okay uh, let's do full installation because I've got plenty of time unless of course I did actually install the um, I'm using a light version aren't I <laughs> It'd be funny if I'm not okay there we go so it's installed now so let's proceed now one thing we do need to do before we do this is I need to take out the virtual machine the virtual CD-ROM. So you won't. Oh, well, you put. You will actually. You'll have to remove the um, the the CD-ROM DVD. Let's remove that, and then go back in and click proceed. Now that's actually going to boot from the hard disk now. No, it's, no, it's not because it's going to want me to do that. So I'm going to go down here and I'm just going to reset the machine. Let's do reset. There we go. You saw that was really quick, but remember, it's not going to work that quick. Now, a lot of for a lot of people, using it in a virtual machine is actually a great way of doing it. Is this the first time we've run it? So, say so yes. Click in there and now it's set up. Do your settings, whatever you want to do. I'm going to do English, and then I'm going to do my time zone, which is the UK. I'm going to save. Now it wants me to the keyboard. We do British. I think I've got extended, haven't I? But I think I just do British. Um, and then mouse. I don't really want fast. Let's just do normal and save. Uh, now, this is too much for this um, tutorial, but there is a way that you can set, because at the moment it defaults into Visa mode. If you're doing it in hardware and it recognizes hardware that it likes, like an NVIDIA card, it'll instantly give you these modes that you can do it for widescreen. But because this is in Visa mode, which is default mode, it's in a uh, rectangular you know, 4.3 mode. I'm not gonna bother changing that. Um, if you wanna use it in VMs, then 
you know get in touch and I'll, I'll add the command you need to run to modify VirtualBox because a lot of people actually like to do it so if I set this now we we'll turn this volume on and then we we'll go to this now because it's using the VM again let's give it a few channels uh, we'll click on there and let's turn it up let's see if it makes any noise there we go so that's all set up so it's now got sound now you can set your menus how you want I, I actually like the classic look I always have and this off screen move if I move that out you see I can go off off the screen whereas I like to turn it off so you can't so well, when you save the settings of course now there's some more settings here so you've got your environment I'm gonna go into Magellan which is basically Opus 5.9 which is absolutely amazing what a difference this has made to AROS. Uh, networking, it's going to use, uh, well, it's if you want to put an FTP file share, there's a web server on board and VNC, Ami Bridge, um, you can run sound. There's a lot of stuff in here, boot sound. So anyway, let's just go. There you go. Let's reset that. So that's, there we go. How many more times do you want me to do that? <laughs> right. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to reboot the computer now because my icons. Right. Um, had a couple of problems with that. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to um, continue in the virtual machine I've already created. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to show you how you can change, modify the default visa set up into a widescreen mode. And there's a website I'm about to show you. So I'll continue from there. Okay. Okay, um, I, I just want to show you how you can, if you're doing it into a virtual box, um, what you can do is you can change this setting. If you see this line here, okay, if you go into a command prompt, um, on, if you look, keep an eye on this site up here, but just basically search for widescreen um, virtual box. If you put that, that in and the name of the virtual machine that you're using and put in like 1920 by 1080 by 32, that will give you the right screen mode. Now I've actually got one set up already, so I'm going to jump into a pre system. This is the one I did, but I'm over a few problems because I've already got one set up. So um, I'm going to just shut this one down. I'm going to load a different one so you can see it. So let me um, close. No power off the machine because that was purely show you how to install. Now if I go to here and click on one that I've already got set up. Now this is my uh, Ubuntu 2.2. Same thing again, um, but this time what's happened is it's been set up specifically with that command I just showed you, um, and uh, so it's it's a widescreen display. Now of course it's best I mean, if you're doing this. I'm hopefully you're doing this on real hardware, so it's irrelevant. Um, it just it's a lot easier for me to show you in the what well, it seems easy, doesn't it? Uh, it's easier to show you in a virtual machine rather than do it on, on the real hardware. Um, right, so uh, let's take you through this so you can have a little look at this. Now, if you click on AROS at the top, and it's still fairly basic. I, I've, I've changed things like the backdrop, and I've changed the uh, backdrop of the window. Um, but I'm going to show you how you can change some of these bits and pieces. We can see now at the bottom we've got the taskbar here. Um, if you click on here, so you've got the nice, you know, the, I mean, I know it's a Windows thing, but it is actually really useful. Um, you've got the uh, the start bar there. Uh, and, and access to all the applications basically. But let's go into Presence to show you some of the things you can change. So what I was trying to do is go to the screen mode. Now this is already now set, but if you had in your hardware and you had like, for example, a, a supported Nvidia card, you get a load of menu options. You probably saw that in one of the other videos and you can select the correct screen mode. Okay, so you can change that. Um, you can change your theme. So you can see the theme I've got at the moment um, let's go to one to kind of, if you look up here, you can see what it's going to look like. And if I do a save, and then it'll want me to restart, I restart it, and I come back with a new theme. Now, there's a load of themes in this. Um, I might actually. It's a bit loud, isn't it? <laughs> let me see if I can kill that sound. Okay, let me turn the sound down a little bit. It is a little bit loud. Okay. Ah, uh, so let's. So now you can see if I double click on it, you can see now we've got it's more of a Windows kind of um, Windows, Jesus, uh, an Amiga kind of display. Um, 
so uh, there's other things like, I mean there's t I mean like, as this, this is not really a tutorial how to use Icarus but um, there's an awful lot of information in here a lot of settings you should be familiar with this if you're an Amiga user you should be familiar with this things you might not be familiar with um, things like boot so if I click on boot this is how the boot preferences how it's going to start up graphics mode automatic enable composition depending on the hardware um, use highest res um, resolutions um, and there's modules. There's a whole lot of bits and pieces in there. There's also Icarus settings, and you can you may have seen these when I did this earlier. Um, there's some network settings. Now, in in here, there's not much to do. But if I click on, if I go to network, you can see I've got PC Net32. Now, if you're running, if you was going to do the um, like I was saying, the Intel Pro, which is probably a good one for you to buy to plug into real hardware, you'd remove that. Go into add select from the, the box here and select Intel Pro apply and then when you save that and you reboot next time that will come up and that will support that card um, so that's that one and I think I just showed you the audio um, let me show you one other thing that's really useful if you go into tools and you're trying to figure out if your card is supported if you go to this into tools and there's a program in here called PCI tool this tells you what you've got in your system. Now let's scroll down to the bottom. Use you some more interesting information. So, keyboard. Right, okay, so it's saying here AC97 controller. Now, if you've got one with AC97, you've probably got a good chance it's going to be supported. Um, that which is the uh, Intel's system. Now, not always, but by and large, they're usually supported. Um, or they can be quite easily add, add support. Uh, that's not much else anyway where's the network card network ethernet so you can see it's PC net fast and that's a great way of finding out so if anyone asks you what, what equipment you've got you can just tell them okay um, now what else have we got here because um, I don't want to go too in depth because there's a brilliant manual if, in fact if you click on go to here to manuals where's manuals it's in here somewhere <laughs> it always catches me out where is manuals? I know it's in here. God. Oh, here it is. Look, it's the next the next icon a lot. Click on that. Go to manuals. There's a really nice Icarus manual um, which you can use, which is a PDF. Um, it covers just about everything you're going to want to do with it. And it's in a as you can see, 133 pages and it's a great manual have a good look through that you can also do things like um, connect to, to cloud drive so um, Google Drive Dropbox etc um, there's a, I mean it, it's very advanced though Ross there's an awful lot of things you can do now let me just show you the changes now before we used to before we had um, uh, directory opus 5 um, work, the files were just like, obviously like this, you click on that and open up, you've got your icons etc. But now what we've got, because of Opus 5.9, if we double click on it, you've got whole different toolkits. So you've got all of this and, I, and you can see I've got a toolbar at the top here which I can click on. So if I want to, if I open up another window here, go to AROS and then we'll select on here let's say let's just pick that I can go up to I can either go up to copy up here or I can click on the copy to and it'll just fire it across it's absolutely brilliant I mean it's just made life so much easier now having said that uh, yes I was trying to dig delete clipboard let's not do that let's delete that file right having said that you've also got in here you've got directory opus 4 which I mean I absolutely love which is the original four. So you've got the best of all worlds in this. Anyway, so it's fairly straightforward to do that. Let me just show you how you to go into change the settings for uh, Director OS 5. Go to settings, environment. For example, if you go to background, I mean, there's so much you can play with here. Change the background picture. Let's go into, for example, wallpaper competition. Do something at random. No, no, I think I've already done that. We are future. Okay and let's use that there you go um which is really nice. and the great thing is it's nice and fast everything is really fast i actually prefer using real hardware but for a lot of people it actually works really nicely just just in the virtual machine and it costs you nothing you can download it for nothing the virtual machine costs nothing you need a decent machine obviously well you know reason machine has got um 
uh, what they call it, it's a hardware virtualization that you can use. Um, but there's a lot of nice stuff in here. So uh, let me see, we've got, um, let's run some videos. There we go, so we've got videos. Oh, that's great. I mean, for developers, they use this quite a lot. Uh, what else? Um, what else was I going to show you? Uh, oh, yes, that was it. OWB. Let's see if OWB is connected. OK, I'm pretty sure it is. Let's just make sure. Yes, that's connected. So now we've run it. Now, bear in mind, this is running on um, an i7 um, in virtual machine. And it's great actually for testing things like the um, SMP. That's why a lot of the, the videos you'll see are done in this. But I'm going to do my videos in the real machine. So let's do, uh, let's do Amiga World. Here we go. Let me see how quick that is. Because that's obviously running on i7. So, you know, at the end of the day, you know, even in virtual machine, this is fantastic. But I, I prefer the real thing. This actually works. I absolutely love it on the real hardware. It's a lot of pleasure. Anyway, so that's how you install it. I don't think it's too complicated. Um, and let's see what the next video is. Thanks very much. Right, what I want to show you now is how you can build a machine for about 200 pounds, give or take a tenner, um, which will be a four gigahertz machine and will run like night, run, run, can't even speak, run like lightning. Um, so what we've got here at the moment is the, the key part. So you've got a motherboard here and I've opened this up here. The important thing on this motherboard is it needs two PCI slots. If you've got the two PCI slots, then you can plug in the um, Intel Intel Pro Network card and you can also plug in the Sound Blaster Live card. Um, so that both of them are very important. That then gives you sound and networking. Um, if you, it's very unlikely you'll get one, but if you can get one with an IDE controller on board, that's even better. But most of them have got a SATA, and I'll come back to that shortly. So, a basic motherboard. This has got DDR3. It costs about fifty pound. It's fifty-seven pound twenty-seven, which is a pretty good price. The next thing is the processor. So this is just this one's actually three point seven, but you can for the same kind of price you can get a four gigahertz. In fact, this would probably overclock and give you four gigahertz. Um, I'm not 100% sure is this is dual core, quad core. No, it's a quad core. There you go. Um, so that's a quad core chip. Now, obviously, with the existing ARAS, it's only running a, on a single core. But when the SMP, which is running when it ships in Icarus, you'll then be able to use all four cores. All right, let's go back. Now, the memory, I've just got one stick of DDR3 RAM. It's not particularly quick, but it doesn't need to be. And also, you're supposed to put these in in pairs, but you can run them on their own. 2 gig on ARAS is a lot, so I've just put one stick. The next thing is a case. It's the cheapest case I could find that was reasonably good. It must be able to run the ATX motherboard in it, obviously. Um, and it's got a red light on the front. Now, obviously, I quite like that. A bit childish like that. Uh, and then there's a 600 watt power supply. Uh, 5 600, I would say, you know, go, so, um, go 600 watt is not a bad idea. And it, you notice it says a PCIe connector for graphics card that's kind of important now how you kit this thing out you, you need to really know what you're doing whether you've got the right connectors and so on um, my 7800 only got a single PCIe power lead on it um, the one I'm going to show you next has got more and these two um, so you might need an extra cable if it doesn't come with it so that's the basic machine now on top of that well, oh, let's show you the price of this total price of that lot comes to 166 pound 41p okay right so that's the motherboard the chip and the ram which is the most important bit obviously the the process normally comes with a uh heat sink for the and a fan for the cpu case power supply next thing you need you obviously need storage now you because at the moment aros doesn't support sata it's being worked on but it doesn't support it yet so it's everything's on the ide and plus the fact Six, I've got a 16 gig, and I've actually bought one of these for my machine, which I probably you, you would have seen earlier on. It's running this exact model, um, and it's brilliant for, for AROS. Now, what you want to do is you pair that. Now, that's 17 pound. You want to pair that up with one of these cards, which is, as you can see, three pounds 69. Put the two together, use one of these cables, okay, and then you would connect it to the board I'm not actually showing. Great. Okay, so here you can see 
what this does this plugs into the PCIe slot one of the spare slots um, and it's got an IDE interface now um, don't rush out and buy this system until part three because I haven't tested this bit yet to make sure it works I see no reason why it won't but bear with me on this one okay but this will this will solve your problems as, as long as it works so as I said don't buy it until you've seen part three when I'll confirm it now so that's your drive etc so you can see there that's seven pound cable with two pound 89 compact flash 3.6 three pound 69 17 pound for a 16 gig drive and mine's only using seven gig the last thing you need is the graphics card now um this is a fantastic card as i showed you earlier on um i'm going to put this in my big build um and this is uh, a gtx 460 um the AWOS supports higher fun enough um it, i think it will go to the 500 series but i've got this one i know this will work i've had it run on AWOS before um and it makes a great a great card and you can see here i mean i actually got it down 27 pound 50 so i got a fiver off you can pick these cards up for peanuts so um that's a that's a great one so that would be the second hand part because the new ones nowadays um at the moment avos doesn't support the new gpu so you'd have to get this part second hand but just find yourself a decent one pick one up for 20 quid and you're laughing okay so this is an interesting one it's a bit of a hodgepodge but i'm just dropping this video in now that card i just showed you is plugged into there and it's plugged into my beast of a machine okay and it's running aros it actually boots from it, fine enough. Now, um, this does work, so um, maybe a case of choice of motherboards that I'm going to be doing this with. But as I said, I've got another motherboard coming. Um, but it does work in theory, so yeah, that's good news. Okay, bye. Okay, so to sum up, hopefully this has been of use. Um, I hope you support Icarus Desktop, and if you can donate or become a patron to... Um, to uh, Paolo on this because he does an awful lot of work. He's been doing it for many years, um, and I think, and he deserves the support. Um, hopefully, you'll experiment with this. If you want to do it in virtual box, fine. Um, but you know, you really should try it on the hardware. It is absolutely fantastic using it on hardware. Um, there's going to be a uh, the part three of this. The part three is basically me building a completely nuts AWOS machine, completely over the top. Uh, I've got an i7 machine sitting over there waiting for it and I'll be showing you that with the, the, the 460 GPU etc um, so that'll be part three so if you uh, subscribe and click the alarm button you'll see that automatically and also as I said don't go building this machine um, this one I showed you earlier on because um, for now I want to test that card to make sure that that card works I mean it's just I thought oh, that's a fantastic idea I want to be 100% sure it does actually work um, but yes, yeah, if that works, then that's absolutely fantastic, and then we can really get this thing moving. Um, but otherwise, you can just go and get yourself a second-hand motherboard with a, an IDE slot on it in front of it, and you're laughing. The only thing I didn't show on there was a, a, a um, DVD drive. Um, that's probably about fifteen pound to add that onto the list. But you know, so for about two two hundred to two thirty something like that, you can build a decent AWOS machine. Okay, uh, I'll see you soon in uh, part three. Thanks a lot.